So what's this you're looking at then? It's the Lexibook Cyber Arcade game console. It looks resembles a Wii knockoff. Um, it's something that um, I've spent uh, several months working on an emulator for. It's actually been a project I wanted to start many years ago, but only finished relatively recently. Um, it uh, so yeah, you're looking at looking at the emulator here, and do be aware that a few of the quirks you see today won't be quirks of the hardware. They'll still just be quirks of my emulator. But I wanted to make a video about this for a while because it's um, a very interesting system. A few people have reviewed it. A few people have called it the worst game console of the world while doing so. But I think it's pretty cute. So. Um, it's obviously a knockoff system, I'm roughly attempting to knock off the Wii, but unlike many of the knockoff systems which use the essentially NES based SOCs from VRT, now they've come a long way from the NES since then, they're still based on a 6502 processor, but they've added far more graphics hardware, color modes, sound hardware, that kind of thing, but yeah, fundamentally they're still 6502 based. This takes a clean break from that, it's based on an S plus core processor, it's not an architecture you will have heard of, but rather Sun Plus is its own 32 bit risk architecture that's kind of heavily heavily MIPS based. I'm sure if they were doing it these days they would have picked risk 5 but this is a processor from 2006-2007 when that very much wasn't a choice. Even if in the end there are quite a few similarities between the two really as far as the generic 32-bit risk design space goes. But um, yeah, on top of that processor, the SPG293 still adds some very typical old school style sound and graphics hardware. So it's got things like 24 table wavetable synthesis, rather than just doing all the sound and software. And it's got um, a PPU that roughly resembles that of the snares with a few more color and resolution modes. But it's even got things like a mode seven style perspective, perspective abilities for kind of 2.5D, plus a few things that are thrown on that I think are new, like doing things like sprite rotation and more advanced layer rotation and, and that kind of thing. So yeah, imagine graphics capabilities roughly similar to a snares with much more processing power they may or may not use and much more storage space because this thing is running off a four gigabyte SD card rather than say a very constrained mask ROM game cartridge. So that's a bit of an overview of the system. I'm going to play through a bunch of games in my emulator, show you what the kind of things this thing can do, or at least what they made it do. And um, yeah, let's go. Tennis. So why not start with tennis? And um, yeah, this is essentially attempt to clone the Wii Sports Tennis game. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well because instead of the proper motion controls that the Wii has, this has essentially a ball on a spring inside a, inside a little tube that makes a contact. So the only variable you have is timing. There's no ability to send strength or direction or anything like that. So yeah, a lot of these things start with a test shot. You notice the very much Wii style vibes here. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate how easy Four. this is by immediately faulting, but... Um, Four. Zero, 15. Once you've got past that, you pretty much invariably get stuck into a very long loop with the AI when you have perfect teaming from a keyboard rather than the kind of unpredictability of, yeah a little ball rattling around inside a plastic tube. Tennis. But uh, yeah, Golf. things get a lot more interesting with the next game, Golf. So this time we're actually using, as you might notice, the Mode 7 style tra hardware to do some rotation and the layer perspective transform for the kind of yeah, kind of snares, slightly Neo Geo-ish, 2.5D things going on here. And yeah, I like this golf game. It does automatically pick a club and a direction for you, but that doesn't take into account any hazards. So as you, particularly as you get onto the trickier holes, you have to pick your own directions, do a better thinking. Yeah. As far as golf games go on rip-off consoles, I've seen a lot worse. At least they didn't just take the NES, NES golf game and stick some slightly prettier graphics on it like they probably would have done for a VTXX system. got 18 holes, unfortunately only one horse course, but um, yeah, as far as, as far as, so this is a classic thing where it looks like you might be able to get directly onto the green, but you're definitely taking a risk with the bunker. Will we make it? 
nearly in the rough. You do notice the odd graphical glitch on this one, which as I say is very much an emulator problem, not a not a hardware problem in this particular case anyway. A lot of these sports games are Snowball. not that interesting Snowball. and I'm not particularly an expert in, in the underlying sports so I can't really give a good comment but I'll show you a few more just to get you an idea. Snowball. So Snowball, this is perhaps a bit of a different one. So you're throwing and dodging snowballs, basically. Snowball. Goal. Tennis. I, uh, in case you're wondering why I'm flitting around this slightly unpredictably, in this particular menu the expectation is you're holding the controller vertically, but most of the games actually, particularly in the game section, need a horizontally held controller, and so the key bindings I have here are for that, so I'm always having to remember the controls are rotated in my head. Super Slider, Super Slider is quite a nice sports game. So a somewhat crude skiing simulator. But it has an interesting feature in terms of how it does the controls, which is that it uses both joysticks and motion controls in both of them. So essentially each joystick is a pole and you shake both if you just want to move and you can shake one or the other to veer in a particular direction. And you have jumps, and you can do tricks, but try not to fall onto the ground and smash. There's actually another version of this that's even more fun that we'll probably come to in another video sometime in the future on a different system, but um, yep, this isn't bad. I can imagine this being quite fun if you actually had, actually had the controllers to shake. These speeds are, on the other hand, slightly less realistic. I think um, 200 kilometers an hour doesn't sound particularly safe to me, despite not being a skiing expert here. Super slider. So, what else can we show on the sports Bowling. games? Bowling, always a favorite on Wii Sports. It's interesting, I believe the music in this one is actually not using any of the fancy sound hardware, but uh, a software decoded MP3. Which is perhaps not the best use of their processing power, but that's what they're doing. Post throw. Yeah, you have to, as with a lot of these rip-off Wii consoles, they rely heavily on power meters and timing and that kind of thing, because yeah, fundamentally you only have one Second. one element of control, which is which is the timing. So there's no s detecting the swing direction. You have to pick that with the arrow keys because no accelerometer, no gyro. I won't look at too many of the sports oh. games because they all pretty similar. And yeah, why maybe one or two more. Um. Hmm. Sword of Warrior is a very good game, but also exists in a game version rather than a sports version, which suits my control input control setup better. So we'll look at that one instead. What about trampoline? I can do it. So to start with, you've just got to follow by shaking the thing, and then they're going to start by introducing some instructions that you have to follow. Um, actually, these sequences are pretty tough. 
I might be attempting to be more rhythm than I can get in my emulator. Unfortunately, I am yeah, not doing very well at the rhythm here. More. On to the fun section. Time to have Art. some proper fun. Fun. So, there are a couple of games here that are just typical puzzle games. I'll show you one of them just because there's something bottle. something quite interesting about these. So, say puzzle bubble, no trademark violations going on here. And yes, there's a Windows Vista style UI, and you may be wondering why on earth is there a UI, Windows Vista style UI here? Well, one of the original uses of this code base and this hardware was in some educational game consoles made made in China and sold exclusively for the Chinese market by, by Subo. They had um, typically either built into a keyboard or later on a Wii style chassis with an infrared keyboard. And they had, as well as the games here, also some, some educational content and in general aimed for a kind of fake Windows UI and some things are more XP-like, some things are more Vista-like, but yeah, they've really thrown a Vista style UI onto this. Starting in level one. Yeah, it's a perfectly okay implementation of Puzzle Bubble. Nothing amazing with it, nothing terrible with it. It works. Puzzle Bubble. I will skip the rest of them. Solitaire, Ball Blast is a Zuma game. Solitaire, everyone knows. Square is a Tetris clone that's pretty mediocre. Game and we will player. go into Game Player, which is most, where most of the interesting games are. So now this is where things start to get pretty, pretty interesting. So first of all, we start off with some pretty generic gambling games. I don't know the rules for any of these, so I'm not going to attempt to play them. And then, then we add on to Blazing Fiber, Fighter, and now we're really into the, the games proper. So. Something you'll notice with a lot of these games is they have really quite pretty cutscenes, and yeah, they really did seem to put quite a bit of effort into the art here, particularly some of like the 3D graphics and stuff. It, it does seem to be pretty original if, if reused between many of the games on this system. So if you look into this game, it really does have things like special moves and stuff. It's suddenly more effort than the usual fighting game they, they put into these kind of consoles. So, player select. Rosetti. You'll notice that many of these characters are extensively reused throughout the different games in the system, which on the one hand saves assets, but on the other hand, of course, gives the opinion to of a kind of consistent theme throughout the games, which is also cute in its own way. I'm unfortunately terrible at fighting games and I'm even worse at playing them on a laptop keyboard so I'm not going to deliver my best performance here but, but you get the idea of the game. It's nice graphics, it's kind of snezzish, snezzish quality certainly and yeah they put their effort in. They seem to have probably a pixel artist or something. It's, yeah it's pretty cute. Not a bad game. No, hmm. Bomb Superman. I wonder what this game is possibly implying. Yeah, it's a Bomberman clone. And yeah, it does certainly amuse me that in their attempt to avoid the Bomberman trademark, they ended up probably committing a far worse trademark violation. But yeah, with many of these clone games, it's okay. The graphics are decent, the mechanics are pretty well copied, no major problems. Brooks Climber, this is a clone of that Ice Claimer game that you might know from the NES. Once again, pretty much an exact clone with better graphics. Nothing majorly wrong with it, nothing majorly exciting or new about it. Onto Bubble Boy, which is another clone of Puzzle Bubble. This one, from my experience, tends to be slightly more annoying to controls. 
slightly more annoying music. The other control, the other, the other one is better if you can forgive the Windows Vista style UI. Cake Shop is one of these shop style simulator games. You gotta take a cake, put the right um, toppings on, that kind of thing. So you have orders coming in from this very much not Superman clone and that's apparently what they want. So you have to... In fact, I hit the wrong type of cake. Oops. Your cake arrives. You can add icing, you can add toppings. And, yeah. It's very much Flash games from the 2000, early 2000s vibes, like a lot of the things on the system. Candy Bear, now this is the fun one. Wondering if you're starting to realise what this might have been a clone of. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe some of you are starting to recognise those characters. All those sounds. Yep. This is a straight-off clone of, of the NES Mario Brothers with somewhat questionable physics and, yeah, some interesting graphical choices. And the rather sad downside that, yeah, you can't go down the pipes, which kind of seems to be one of the very fun mechanics of Mario Brothers just gone, but they obviously didn't realise that. And yeah, the level design is the same as Mario Brothers basically all the way through. Super Mario Brothers 1 for NES, that is. Yes, we have to watch the cutscene just to exit. Caribbean Stud Poker, again, no idea how to play those games, so I'm going to skip over them because I couldn't really give fair comment. Kate Match is a kind of swap and match game. This one actually adds quite interesting mechanics as you get further along. So the important goal is that you have to basically eliminate all the all the squares in blue have to be eliminated. So for example, we've eliminated the first one, and yeah, if you keep on playing, more interesting mechanics come along. Things like squares that have to be removed twice, pieces that won't remove, pieces that have to be removed in order that other things fall through. So yeah, it's not bad. Cheese Maze. This is one of the very generic 2D kind of, again, flash game vibes things you get on here. This might be a clone of a NES game, but I can't put a particular particular game off the top of my head, so yeah. You have to avoid the cheeses when they're going like that. And yeah, get through the maze. Circus. You're gonna have to start. You have to start with wire walking because there's a kind of little money thing going on here, and you have to start with the most basic, 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 basic activities because. Um, yeah, otherwise you don't have enough money to, to start the more advanced ones, but yeah. Again, it's kind of a NES game that I don't think ever exists, but very much could have been requiring sort of careful controller movements and... Yeah. 
not convinced by this one, but maybe you can have some fun with it. Crazy fish. This is, I believe, a clone of um, of Echo the Dolphin. But yeah, it's pretty pretty. Suddenly, worse games on here. Quite like the music too. So yeah, it's typical kind of mechanics. You can eat fish that are smaller than you, you can't eat fish that are bigger than you, they'll eat you, and the more fish you eat, the bigger you get. Oops, I got eaten. Crazy lamb. Once again, I'm sure this is a clone of some kind of NES game, more or less, but, but I can't remember the exact mechanics. The graphics kind of remind me of Donkey Kong, but I think that's probably partly just a coincidence. You have to shoot the balloons. Crazy step. Feel like we're back into flash puzzle game 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 mechanics with this one, but yeah, you have to make all the squares blue without getting eaten by any of the other things. And yeah, that's basically how it goes. Typical isomorphic-y kind of thing going on. So onto Dinosaur Factory, and yep, yeah, I like this game. It's a factory game, but the mechanics are a lot more fun and fast-paced than the cake shop one we looked at earlier. It's somewhere in between like a flash game and like a phone game if they weren't all the free free phone games weren't really massively abusive. So yeah, it's fun. It doesn't really make sense. You have things like dinosaur frames appearing out of nowhere. And yeah, it goes around it's all based around this conveyor belt, parts being thrown at you, you moving them around to combine them into little toy dinosaurs, but yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I've spent many a many a fifteen minutes playing this. Uh, testing the emulator in quotation marks, but yeah. Maybe basic, but yeah, something kind of snappy and fun about it. Occasionally you get requests, if you fulfill them you get a few more points, but you don't have to, and um, you can also just build dinosaurs and you'll, they'll count towards your quota to you move up to more levels, the more dinosaurs you build, and the order the parts come in start getting a bit harder the, the, the further level you're up. Dr. Genius. I was might be kind of expecting this to be a Dr. Mario clone, but actually it's not. It's a sort of generic 2D scrolling puzzle game. You're here, you can move these things around. You've got to get to the exit. Whoa! And there we go. Levels start to get more advanced, requiring you to move things around, and yeah, a lot of the games have these kind of over maps they've thrown together as well for them, which is kind of nice. Again, more effort than these things usually have. Um, I was wondering how you exit from them, but yeah, apparently you can't exit from the, the overworld map. Dream F1, one of a couple of racing games on here. This is probably one of the less interesting ones, but it works. Kind of 
essentially NES gameplay mechanics with slightly better graphics, but yeah, there are definitely better racing games on here. Um, exiting appears to be broken from this one, so we'll have to do a soft reset. Sports. Fun. Game player. And back to the game player. You can bet I've heard sports, fun, and game player a ton over these last, last few months. Firebolt Swordbone. This is a kind of side-scrolling shooter type game. Feels like this one had a decent amount of effort put into the art and music, although interestingly it runs the console at half resolution mode rather than full resolution. But that kind of doesn't matter because, yeah, it's pretty pixel art. It's a fun game. Perhaps a bit more of a NES game than a SNES game, but yeah. You have some special abilities to shoot these things. It's not bad. I do like the pixel art style on this one a lot. Five diamonds. You gotta swap diamonds to make five in a row. Um, forgot the controls for this one for a second. It uses the start button to pick diamonds, strangely. Every time you swap, diamonds appear. I think there are probably some rules to how they appear that I haven't quite worked out, but yeah. The fundamental principle is doing that until you've got five in a row. There you go. Flying Rabbit, one of the many pretty boring generic games, I think we'll skip that one. Forest Adventure. This is, as you might have guessed, a clone of Adventure Island. It's a pretty nice clone. I'd say I like it more than the, than the Mario Brothers clone, that's for sure. Graphics have a slightly Donkey Kong Country vibe about them. It's partly just the kind of pre-rendered 3D leaves, but yeah. Seems to have copied most of the game mechanics, and yeah. Doesn't work too badly. Seems to be noticing a tiny bit of slowdown in the emulator as I am... Um, Attempting to record and play, but it's working pretty well. It's Adventure Island, basically. Fruit Link. You link fruit. It's a very boring and basic puzzle game. Can only link them if they're adjacent, or they've got an air gap between them. Pretty, pretty mere. Future Warrior, this is a good one. They certainly put effort into the cutscene on this one, unless this is just just some generic video they ripped, but yeah. If they really made that, then let me impressed. Of course, because this console runs on an SD card, unlike the cartridge-based systems of, of yesteryear, they've essentially got unlimited storage space. They bundle a the thing with like a 4GB micro SD card full of everything, which certainly makes it interesting. Steadily started. And this is a kind of isomorphic shooter. Actually pretty hard. I've really lost a life. It's, um, yeah. I've in fact lost two lives, but yeah. The graphics are decent. I quite like the isomorphic gameplay. It's heavily, heavily SNES vibes here. Just running at slightly higher resolution, slightly more colours, and a bit more data available for a fancy cutscene at the start. Gold Digger, 
very generic crane type game, not much exciting about it, can again be skipped over. Instead we're going to go for Greedy Cat, the game that really uh, is my game. One of the many games on here that's somewhere between flash game and phone game. You got a skewer. You gotta poke fish. And I've already done this badly, but you gotta get three fish on a on a thing, and then they explode. And the cat is happy. And you gotta do this until you got a certain target number of points. So there's a degree of timing required to get the thing right, which in the emulator is probably a bit harder than in hardware, and also a bit of strategy in terms of not getting stuck with a pole full of the wrong fish. It's not the most intellectually stimulating game in the world, but it's okay, and I like the meows. Highway racing. This is very much, very, very, very much a clone of one of those NES games with fuel that declines at a constant pace, no proper steering, and you've got to dodge some cars, and some will behave differently. And I think this one has a way of getting fuel top ups later on as well, but don't fully count me on that. Hitting mice, this seems to be a common common name among Subo's things, although graphics are somewhat improved from the traditional traditional NES ones or VT ones. Some nice Donkey Kong artwork here. You've got to hit the mice until they nest in one of the holes. I think that might be some Donkey Kong music as well. Ice It's apparently an ice hockey game, but because it's using just controller controls, it's not the it's not um, not counted as a sports game. Uh, the controls for this are pretty finicky. It's got kind of NES football game vibes. You might be okay if you're into this kind of thing, but not my kind of game. Little fairy. platforms, you can shoot things. It's a pretty typical little 2D puzzle game. We're seeing a few emulator glitches there, but always nice playable. I win. One of the games where you have to enter a game in order to exit it, but that's how these things work. Little Postman. If you happen to know the Atari game Paperboy, this might be a little bit familiar. It's been brought into the 21st century by delivering parcels instead of papers, and um, no doubt our poor Little Postman is now employed on a questionable gig economy basis with very inadequate delivery equipment based on the size of his van. I've got a... Let's raid our scooter. There we go. Magic rectangle. It's a breakout loan. As far as breakout clones on these kind of things go, pretty high effort. The ball does go at more than just 45 degree angles, which is nice. 
And there's a quite a range of power-ups. Um, decent graphics, decent music. As far as breakout goes, you can certainly get a lot worse. Maze Adventure. So, you've got to get to the exit before the enemy does. Or before the enemy gets to you. Do, 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 do. Memory card. Is this some kind of SD card access functionality? Nah, it's just remembering cards. They tell you who you are, what the cards are, and once that's gone, you would have find the pairs. Mini checkers, this is the kind of game I'm going to skip over because, yeah, I'm simply not going to know how to play it. Mission 2068, this is more like the kind of thing. We are into the realm of cutscenes again. Although, yeah, this is one of the games that's running again at half resolution 256 by 240 instead of um, 320 by 240 instead of 640 by 480. have a little intro scheme which unfortunately wasn't very well translated but it's cute. It reminds me of the Game King titles if you know that Ashen's video but they've actually done the scrolling for us here. They unfortunately didn't quite do the perspective effect as Ashen's did but yeah it's nice that they've saved some of our work I guess. The Sankain Nation began their eight years dark rule to Manfil Star in 2068. Okay, I'm not going to pretend to be Ashen's here. little intro again. Yeah, being deposited. And yep, yeah, it's a vertically scrolling tank game. Pretty nice for this kind of thing in terms of the range of enemies and things you can do and power-ups and, and this and that. Decent pixel art. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Not massively my kind of game, but huh, it's as playable as most, play for certainly as playable as many a NES, or NES game out there. Motor Storm. This is a considerably prettier racing game. Unfortunately, runs at fairly low resolution, but yeah, they certainly put a lot more effort into one, again into two, the three. pixel art style graphics of this one and the rendering and the hills. Mm. It's not bad. They've only got three courses, but it's actually pretty tough. You've got quite a few obstacles to negotiate. Mountain backdrop that I'm sure I've seen in at least one other game before. You have to finish in the top three if you want to get through to the next one. So yeah. One of those games that yeah I've certainly been able to keep myself entertained with, which is yeah, certainly a pretty good standard for this kind of thing. Ooh, we've got some animals on the road. Yeah, that's something I like about the style of this one. Mountain biking. This is 
pretty similar to the last one, but with somewhat more primitive graphics and a few slightly changed mechanics to account for the fact that we're cycling instead of driving. You have some power-ups, you've got to get the stars. a pretty pretty generic soccer band type game. I'm terrible at soccer band so don't expect much from me. In fact I seem to have already painted myself into a corner here. Ninja Hero Point five D ish forward going shoot them game move a bit bit in this direction. I think there's also yet a way of going up onto there. The graphics definitely give it flash game type vibes, as do the about the level of, of game mechanics. Yeah, it's okay. for speed racing. Voda Fond. I don't know if that was a deliberate attempt to avoid trademark or a typo, but I'm going to assume the form. Ah, oh, we're apparently playing Excite Bike. All that care to avoid a trademark. Hmm. And then they spoil it with the music. racing game. Somehow the graphics remind me of a kind of Java mobile phone game. It's got those kind of vibes with like the quasi 3D and the primitive vibes. Almost wonder if they are graphics from that kind of thing, but yeah. I think the reality of racing games on these kind of thing is that yeah, the pixel art style in Motorstorm works much better than trying to do something like this. Perfect thief. So. You gotta get past the bikes. Poker, I don't know how to play poker. Puppy corpse. Little cutscene intro again. I suspect there's some code base reuse for Metal Ninja here, but yeah. It's another okay game in this genre. You jump, you hit things, you move, you go up the ladder. Unfortunately not.
Don't mind the graphics on this one. Gives it quite a nice vibe. Rabbit slip. Or possibly rabbit slide. This is very much free to play phone game vibes here. Actually, pretty tough. Could probably be more fun with an accelerometer than buttons, but there you go. Raindrop Adventure. Holes, and you want your enemies to fall into your holes. Not like I just did there. Robot. Graphics aren't bad. I haven't put much thought into the game mechanics, but at least they haven't spoiled them either. I guess you've got a bit more going on with the holes and the and the gems, but yeah. Basically, Pac-Man. Roulette wheel. It's a roulette game. Running. As the name implies, this is very, very much free to play smartphone game vibes again. I forget the name of, of the one, the most common one of the genre, but yeah. You don't want to be caught by them. You can throw dynamite to stop them a bit. You gotta avoid the obstacles and for some reason they're really into square food in this one. Certainly a lot better than playing this on a smartphone full of ads and with them attempting to take your entire life savings, so I'll give them that. Yeah, it's actually quite fun. I feel like they probably put effort into the graphics again, unless they just bought them in from somewhere. But yeah, I think I'm going to say those those characters aren't, aren't, aren't fully original. Sleepwalking. Gotta get past these doors to the ice cream. <laughs> no doubt the mechanics start to get a bit more complex in the later levels, and you also have a move tracker, so try and do this in as few moves as possible. That kind of vibe. Slot machines, literally simulating slot machines, and good old snake. It's a perfectly, perfectly competent snake implementation. 
Space Fighter. Back into cutscene territory, and another game that uses the half resolution mode, but has in, in, in compensation some pretty pixel art. It's a vertically scrolling, vertically scrolling shooter game, 1945-ish vibes. We've got some things coming in the ground, decent pace. Some graphics obviously shared with that tank game. Smart bombs. Yeah, some nice-ish pixel art. It's got a vibe. Space War. This is unfortunately a bit more boring than Space Fighter. This one is just just Space Invaders, but we do have another another um, somewhat somewhat amusingly translated scrolling intro. It's kind of interesting that the intros in this have a very similar way they read to the Game King intros, when as far as I know there's no particular connection in terms of people between the two, so I can only presume that the way that the, the, these kind of game intros are written in Chinese tends to turn through automatic translators into a similar kind of, kind of English. Special Mission. Very nice cutscene. Um, I think prostrator means Neil, but other side from this, we are looking at a, at a Contra clone with some really quite nice graphics. Um, yeah, it's well executed. It really is pretty similar to Contra. But somehow I've never been good at Contra in the slightest, but um, oh, nonetheless, had fun playing this one. No clowns. Storm Fighter. I'm really trying hard on the intros. So this is another another vertically scrolling game, I guess it's a bit more like the Galaxian than 1945, at least with the space theme. Some fairly nice art again. Smart bombs again. The music seems vaguely familiar, but I'm not sure if that's just the theme or it's actually taken from somewhere. I'm a bit worried, by the way, with all the stolen music in this system that um, YouTube's going to get a bit unhappy with me, but, but we'll see how that goes. I think luckily most of it was stolen from games where things are hopefully a bit bit okay and also not just stolen directly but um, potentially like they just stole the notes and they, they resynthesized it or whatever or they're potentially even using the hardware MIDI functionality. So yeah, submarine battle. This is the same vibes as that classic pop station game. You're in a ship. You're shooting submarines downwards. They put a bit more effort into the graphics and the power-ups, but 
It's more or less the same thing. You've got a few different kinds of submarines. They're shooting at you, you've got to avoid that. Sword of Warrior, now this is this is the good stuff. I can't deny enjoying this game, I gotta be honest. It's a 2.5D isomorphic type game and they really tried. You can get both both sword and later on you can get like throwing throwing circles. You have quite a range of enemies, you have lots of levels, each with a different backdrop. And yeah. Slightly complicated health mechanics. There's a vibe about this that I really like, particularly, yeah. It's got the whole kind of alternative history of, yeah. What if SNES, but not? I've got the boss now appeared. That health down at the bottom is the health of the boss who we've got to defeat. And... Of course, I'm going to play my game terribly on camera. Um, already lost one heart. Can't we at least get to the next level? much better than this, but uh, alas not for the camera. You get more enemies as you go on, more power-ups. Throwy things as well. It's nice. Sword Soul. This is the second fighting game on the system. Slightly different set of characters and moves, but pretty similar vibes. Again, various button combinations for special moves. Oh, there's Samantha. Yeah, I never remember the special moves, and it's even harder executing them on, on this keyboard, but... Round the one. Ready, go! I do appreciate the graphical effects in this one again. You play different places, different enemies. Pretty typical 16-bit fighting game type thing. They certainly could have made it a lot worse. And yeah, some of these things on other systems literally don't bother with special moves at all, so it's nice they did that. Table hockey. Table hockey. Unfortunately, the physics in this one are really a bit more dubious than they should be, which is unfortunate because, yeah, this thing is only really fun if the physics are good. Yeah, I'm a bit, bit debateful, but it could have been nice. Tale of Treasures. One more of the... What would I say, like... Not sure how you really describe this theme of game, but up and down scrolling, going up and down ladders, 
I think I made a mistake mining that gem because I need to, need to jump up there to get that ladder, but you get the idea. Got to get all the gems to clear the level. Tarot maze. Very much JRPG vibes. You gotta collect keys, move around, fight monsters, buy potions, find potions, that kind of thing. Yeah, different kind of monsters, different kinds of things. Just gradually build up experience, gold. Up ahead, looks like I can get a sword so I can attack better. Gonna collect more keys, clear the level, all that kind of thing. The 100 level. I've seen some very similar things on a on a VRT NES, NESI console before now, but you gotta jump up, not fall down, avoid the various dangers. Pretty basic game mechanics, but yeah, much nicer graphics than some of the earlier versions of this one, and probably slightly better mechanics too. Mouse and the cat. This one apparently scratches my emulator. It is obviously not one I've played much. Sorry about that. Treasure Pico. We're back into half resolution, but quite nice pixel art. Scrolling in this one is a bit odd, but parallax. But got to find all the all the treasures and get to the end and avoid the enemies. No real complaints about this one as far as the type of game it is. You can kill the enemies by squishing them. It might be a game that it's roughly based on, but. I'm not really sure what that is. I guess jumping on things is a bit Mario-esque, but all the rest of the mechanics, like fighting the treasures and the overall theme, is certainly, certainly a bit different. Wave Man. This one seems to be pretty heavily inspired by the original Mario Brothers. That is before before Super Mario Brothers, but um, yeah, they seem to have changed some of the mechanics around a bit as well. Unvaporize that thing. That's the idea. Western hero. So you gotta jump around, shoot things. People shooting from different directions. You can apparently also hit with a knife. That's 
the idea. That's a very odd selection, colour choice. Wolf is coming. Avoid the pigs. Also scare them into a corner. And flick the switch. And then get the pigs out. Oops. Oh well. You get the idea. Zippy race. And Zippy Race is the last of the so-called 32-bit games. That is the ones that are actually native, native Sun Plus games, rather than um, yeah. We'll we'll look at what the other ones are in a second. Three, two, one, go. This one has very similar vibes to Motor Storm. A slightly different set of courses, some slight mechanics changes, but yeah. Once again, lower resolution mode, more pixel art, some incredibly fast speeds, and uh, motorbike that's emitting fire. I guess some vaguely excite bike mechanics with the jump. Yeah, I like Motorstorm, as the racing games go on this thing, this one isn't bad at all. Quite like the vibe. I don't feel like the art is nice as Motorstorm though. And so, these remaining games, these .wxn files, aren't actually running in the Sunplus system at all. They're NES or perhaps, well, VRT, VTO3 games that have just been trivially encrypted and are running in an emulator now. Stacking emulators, particularly when both are not the world's best emulators is um, doesn't work very well, so I'm certainly not going to go through all of these. They pretty much all these ROMs have been dumped or decrypted or whatever and be played elsewhere far better. But um, just to get you an idea of the vibe of the emulator, let's have some Audacity snakes. I do apologise for the sound on this one. Yeah, that's the vibe. I think the sound is a bit better in real hardware, but still pretty. Um, Pretty questionable. And once again, a Vista style UI. So that was it. Game player. I um, hope hope you enjoyed that. Hope that was certainly a bit different to um, what you usually see in terms of well, either bootleg games or legitimate games, really. But um, that's about all that's interesting on the system. Maybe we'll come back a bit, look at a few other little things we've missed, like some of the sports games I skipped over. But yeah, there are a few other systems as well, so I do plan to make some make some videos about those as well because they all have some interesting interesting quirks about them too. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.